I have three balloons here. This one, whoa, almost lost it. This one, and this one. You can tell from my slide what's, on the what's filling the first one. This is helium. Why does breathing in helium make you talk all funny like that? Because it's low density. It's like, really? I, what does density have to do with that? Well, it really is a good illustration of Graham's law, that lighter gases are moving faster. Moving faster means sound travels more quickly through, that, through helium. And because of that, it'll resonate in my vocal chambers, whatever, at a higher frequency. There's a lot more to the explanation than that, but I still will argue it's a better demonstration of Graham's law than is of density. Graham's law that just lighter gases move faster, okay, at the same temperature. <sighs> to get the full impact, by the way, you want to totally exhale, get rid of all the residual air in your lungs. And this is what I sound like when I have helium in my voice box, and that's simply because those helium atoms are moving so darn fast. Look at them go. <laughs> and I always get dizzy. And the, oh, there it is. And that's because it's essentially like holding my breath for that same amount of time. I'm depriving my brain of the oxygen. With this one difference, you hold your breath, your body knows to gasp. It gets that reflex. That reflex does not come from a lack of oxygen. It comes from a buildup of carbon dioxide. But if you're breathing in helium and you're talking funny, breathing in helium, talking funny, you have no feeling like you're suffocating until you just pass out. So I've never done that, but I always get a little dizzy and I breathe again. But you notice how I did it? Yeah, I'll do it one more time. This is how I talk with helium. But you notice something? As soon as I'm done with this breathful, the next breathful is pretty much back to normal. OK? Now, this next balloon, this next, this next balloon, I have filled with a gas that's equally dense as air. And of course, this is how I talk with that in my lungs, in my voice box, because after all, it is, uh, it's nitrogen, yes. <laughs> it's air. There was the helium, and there's the much slower moving nitrogen. Air. Air, you know, is mostly nitrogen. I just blew that balloon up with my breath. OK? But this one has sulfur hexafluoride. And you're probably thinking to yourself, uh, seriously? <laughs> sulfur is what they like, make matches out of, what spews out of volcanoes, uh, sulfuric acid, uh, you know, sulfur dioxide, responsible for acid rain, very reactive. Fluorine, hello, the most reactive of all the nonmetals, agreed? Would he be fool enough to breathe that stuff in? These two nonmetals have bonded together so tenaciously that this substance is just as unreactive, as inert, as the noble gases are. In fact, welders use this. If they've just welded together a seam on like two pieces of metal, they'll blow sulfur hexafluoride on that seam to keep any oxygen from getting to it so that it doesn't oxidize as it cools. That's one of the uses of sulfur hexafluoride. So here we go. You, I think you're all anticipating what's going to happen here, right? So this is what I sound like when I talk with sulfur hexafluoride in my voice box. It's a little bit lower than I usually talk. And you know why? It's because that sulfur hexafluoride is moving so slowly. But now, but now, even after I breathe that out and I breathe in enough air, it's still here, and especially as it gets to the bottom of the lung full, because I have essentially a density gradient in my lungs right now. <laughs> and now I'm on my third breath. I'm still not quite back to normal, but you will notice it more as I get down to the bottom of that breath. I'm not doing that on purpose. It's just coming out that way. <sighs> Ooh. Pardon me a second. That boiled dry, and I need to, I'll need that in a second. <laughs> I'm going to let it cool off, though, before I go add some more in there. So we'll come back to that. Um, so, oh, you have to hear the sinister laugh, OK? <laughs> you, would you would definitely feel like you were denied if you didn't get the sinister laugh, OK? <sighs> mm. 
Like I am your father. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Okay. So what is my what what is my teachable theme with this one you're asking, right? Imagine how imagine how the world would be if everybody aspired to be a chemistry teacher. Oh my gosh, that would be so scary. Of course you know this, folks. Celebrate diversity. Don't, don't just tolerate diversity. My gosh, celebrate diversity. And that comes in all different kinds, right? Not just squeaky voices and low voices, all kinds of diversity. The job of an educator is to teach students to see vitality in themselves. Isn't that the truth?